Tervetuloa Miksi juuri Israel-ohjelman pariin. Tänään olemme Euroopan komission edustustossa Helsingissä ja vieraanani on Euroopan komission antisemitismin torjunnan koordinaattori Katarina von Schnurbein. Katarina von Schnurbein, thank you for joining me in this show. Thank you, Risto. It's a real pleasure. And uh, you are the European Commission coordinator on combating anti-Semitism and fostering Jewish life. What is this all about? <laughs> well, uh, the position was created uh, in December 2015 after we had seen already a lot of lethal attacks uh, on the Jewish community. We had seen increase of uh, anti-Semitism all across uh, Europe and um, the Commission saw the necessity to act and to make sure that first of all there is an entry point for uh, the Jewish uh, community to the Commission but also that um, we can listen to the Jewish community propose policies and then also uh, implement them. So this has been um, very much our approach, my approach to be um, in contact with the Jewish uh, community. That's why I'm also now here in, in Helsinki. Um, and uh, we proposed last year a uh, EU strategy, the first ever EU strategy on combating antisemitism and fostering a Jewish life with over 70 actions, which we are now implementing until uh, 2030. Okay. So how did you become the coordinator? <laughs> fighting anti-Semitism? So, uh, I think it was uh, a combination of uh, personal interest, personal uh, conviction. Um, I come from a Christian home where the topic of Israel, but also the relationship uh, as a German with uh, the Jewish people, the responsibility uh, we have after the Shoah to stand up for the Jewish people, be it in our own environment uh, in, in Germany, but also in relationship uh, to Israel, um, uh, was always a, a discussion uh, around the dinner table. And uh, so for us, this, this was uh, important. And therefore, I had probably a natural um, inclination and, uh, and interest in it. But then I think it was also a combination of being in the right place at the right time. I was before this um, responsible for the dialogue with religions and non-confessional uh, organizations as advisor to European Commission President Jose Manuel Barroso. And, uh, and I was in that position when they were looking uh, for, uh, to set up this uh, office uh, of the anti-Semitism coordinator. And I, I said this would really interest me. And so um, I was lucky to be there and I have to say uh, it's not been easy, but uh, it has been a very uh, rewarding and enriching um, uh, position for me personally as well. And anti-Semitism has been around since million years, uh, and and the Holocaust was kind of a, uh, one of the uh, top expression of anti-Semitism. It took almost eighty years, seventy-five years after after the Holocaust for the EU Commission to establish such a, such a position. Why it took that long? Antisemitism is called the oldest hatred um, and it is uh, therefore, I believe, also an expression always of uh, something else going wrong in society. Yeah? Oh, and it was anti-Semitism that led to the Holocaust, it culminated in the Holocaust. And then after the war, there was a time where people knew that it was not politically correct to make anti-Semitic remarks. What we have seen in the last two decades in particular um, uh, is that people have become much more outspoken, uh, much more um, overt about their um, anti-Semitic prejudices, which were never gone. Huh? We have to be very clear, even after the war, um, these prejudices uh, existed. But as I said, people did not necessarily voice them. And I think it has to also with the fact that the Internet has opened doors um, for bringing anti-Semitism into um, people's 
living rooms uh, and uh, in the last years the algorithms that have been developed further um, amplify um, messages that are being content that is uh, being posted and um, is, uh, is anti-Semitic. So it, I think it, it was uh, at that point that, that we saw it is really necessary to, um, to address this and address in particular also hate speech on the internet. Mm. About the strategy, uh, what is the vision and practical outcome that you are looking for? So, first of all, the strategy is called combating anti-Semitism and fostering Jewish life. So, we clearly address the aspects of uh, anti-Semitism, all forms of anti-Semitism. We see all of them as equally pernicious. We believe that it is very important to make anti-Semitism visible in order to address it. Um, I'll come back to this later. I, th I believe uh, we have uh, a good definition that does this. Um, but there is the second aspect, and that's really the heart of the strategy, is fostering Jewish life. And I would say the whole uh, aim of this strategy is to ensure that Jews see for themselves, for their children and grandchildren, a future in Europe, that living here as being able to live in full accordance with their religious uh, and cultural uh, traditions as they choose to live, as anybody else can choose whether they want to um, be religious or secular, you know, politically right-wing, left-wing, whatever, but that they can uh, go about their lives um, without security concerns and uh, in line with, uh, with mm. their convictions. And, and this, is the, this is the ultimate aim. Uh, of, uh, of the strategy and we also say that the strategy has the aim to put an end to anti-Semitism. Mm. I know it sounds a bit utopic at the moment because uh, the hatred has been around for so long but we need to have this, this high goal in order to make mm. progress to know what we are working uh, towards uh, and if we don't manage to push back anti-Semitism then uh, the uh, in a way, the, the strategy has no success. Hmm. I have read the strategy and there are many references uh, uh, to the uh, International, International Holocaust Remembrance Alliance uh, uh, working definition mm -hmm. for anti-Semitism, so-called IRA defici definition. So, is that kind of uh, one of the core um, issues or things in, in the strategy. Yeah, so uh, indeed the IRA definition has become the basis for the Commission's work um, very shortly after it was adopted. Um, we, uh, we declared it as the basis for our work in January 2017, uh, half a year after adoption by the IRA itself, um, because it lists in examples the various forms of anti-Semitism that we see today. So anti-Semitism has evolved over uh, the centuries. Unfortunately, it never rid itself of old forms, but just added on news. And um, we address you know, racist anti-Semitism, which looks down on people and um, sees Jews as inferior, which is the form of anti-Semitism that led to the Holocaust and to the racist uh, laws. Um, we look at conspiracy myths, um, seeing Jews as superior, so just the opposite, uh, Jews controlling uh, the bank, uh, the politics, uh, the world, which we saw now mutating during um, the corona pandemic into uh, Jews created the virus, Jews are making money from uh, the vaccines, Jews are trying to kill everybody so they can uh, take world dominion. You know, all of these um, aspects uh, we address. And then um, we, we saw that whenever there were incidents, afterwards new forms of anti-Semitism were created. And so when, when the Shoah happened, when the Holocaust happened, afterwards, shortly afterwards, we saw Holocaust denial um, uh, surfacing and now we see Holocaust distortion 
which I think, you know, the difference is that Holocaust denial says basically Holocaust didn't happen. Mm. Um, Holocaust distortion is much more complicated because it d distorts the facts. So, um, you know, they, they, they try to be factual and they try to, uh, to, um, to make comparisons, for example, um, saying, well, you know, Israel does the same in Gaza as the Nazis did to mm. the Jews. So, you know, trivializing, uh, trivializing um, uh, the Holocaust. Right. And after the creation of the State of Israel, we saw anti-Zionism um, surfacing and, uh, and anti-Semitism related uh, to Israel, accusing uh, the Jews of the actions of Israel, um, holding Israel to double standards, uh, requesting from Israel uh, different standards than they would from any other um, country. And so we know from surveys that we did um, in 2018 among 16,500 Jews in Europe that the examples given in the definition uh, resonate to a large extent with what the Jewish community tells us they see as uh, anti-Semitic. Mm. And so the definition um, covers all of this and th therefore um, is very useful for us because it's non-legally binding but it uncovers the biases. Okay. During the, the last seven years you have held the office, you've been traveling around Europe. Uh, how do you see today's Europe for its uh, Jewish citizens? First of all, I think I should say, and this has also been the case here in Helsinki, that it is always very enriching to visit the Jewish communities. Um, I've learned a lot. Uh, also about the diversity within the Jewish community and um, about the way they interact with um, the society in which they live, which of course depends a lot on the history of the country, on the size of the community, on the accessibility um, of the administration uh, towards the Jewish community, on you know, whether, whether they actually have established communication lines uh, with the government or not. So there is there's a broad um, uh, diversity. I see that in most cases um, the Jewish communities are very lively. Um, and anywhere I go they have an issue with uh, anti-Semitism and, uh, and hatred they face in different uh, forms. How about the governments in, in <coughs> different countries? How willing they are to to take this new strategy? Um, so the strategy has been welcomed by all governments. Um, in fact, we even have a formal uh, unanimous decision by, uh, the, uh, uh, by the Council. They endorse uh, and will uh, implement the strategy and also very importantly that by the end of 2022, so the end of this year, they will themselves uh, propose national action plans on how to address anti-Semitism uh, specifically. And so this, I believe, has been um, uh, a very positive um, uh, you know, development and also from the side of the Jewish uh, communities and also from Israel. Um, we have had very positive echoes. Um, even the president of Israel, um, uh, Buzi Herzog, he, um, you know, congratulated and thanked. Um, and uh, we work very closely um, with Israel, specifically also uh, in this uh, aspect. And the strategy itself says Israel is a key partner also um, in the fight against anti-Semitism. Right. We will discuss Israel in a minute, but You've been meeting uh, ministers and, and uh, officials here in, in Finland. What do you think, uh, and, and first of all, help me to understand which uh, part of the government is, is mainly responsible for the, the national uh, action plan for this? So the visit here has been really encouraging. I've seen a lot of willingness um, uh, to, to act and to take up this issue. Um, more generally, with regards to the Finnish society, um, what, I, what surprised me in preparation uh, to this visit is that in our surveys um, about how Europeans see anti-Semitism in their country, the awareness in Finland was surprisingly low. 
uh, while uh, in general uh, about every second European on average regards anti-Semitism as a problem in their respective country, mm. in Finland it's only 17%. So but there probably has been a certain ignorance. Um, mm. uh, but what I found uh, is that uh, in the Ministry of Justice and the Ministry um, uh, of Interior, I also met with the Minister of European Affairs, you know, th that maybe there was not such an awareness that, but when making them aware, mm. they are willing to look into this, also the Ministry of Education. So mm. all the, the, the people I've seen um, uh, from, from these three uh, ministries definitely have um, have shown an openness with regards, for example, to using the IRA definition, which currently is um, is not specifically used um, mm. yet, um, for training purposes of the police, of prosecutors, of um, uh, in the education uh, sector, um, for also improving. Uh, um, the methodology of data collection. That's the same, you know, reasoning to say uh, you can't fight it if you can't define it. You have to make it visible. Um, so they they un they understood also the the fact that um, uh, twenty five percent of Finns only twenty five percent of Finns think that the Holocaust is properly taught. So there is a lot of material on the website of the Ministry of Education, but then the question is, how is it relate uh, right. to teachers? Yeah. So all of these issues, we, uh, we discussed them. Also the fact that, for example, in the strategy, we recommend to appoint special envoys. So, you know, we saw the change ourselves when, when, when we started to have this office, how much we could actually do just simply by appointing um, a person and, uh, and a small team to address um, uh, this issue. And I saw um, really an, uh, you know, a, an opening and a real uh, willingness uh, to engage and to see what can be uh, done. Very good. Um, do you, during your visit here uh, in the events, uh, I had an opportunity to listen to you. One of the uh, issues that that uh, came up was the uh, that the the Finnish Ministry of Agriculture is drafting a new law, uh, which is expected to ban kosher slaughtering. And um, you have a reference in in the uh, European strategy for the kosher slaughtering. Mm -hmm. How do you see that? So. Um with re reference to um, freedom of religion, we say that Jews should be able to live their lives in accordance with their religious and cultural uh, traditions. And um, so um, kosher slaughtering or Jewish uh, slaughtering is uh, one uh, expression of that, um, as is uh, also um, non-medically motivated circumcision. Yeah. So these are aspects uh, that are important uh, to Jewish life and um, while with regards to uh, the meat you can probably still import when it's about circumcision done on the eighth day after giving birth, banning that would mean uh, uh, mm. to eliminate basically uh, babies born in, in, in a country, mm -hmm. uh, you know. And so I think, um, or I should say, with regards to circumcision, there is no competence in the European uh, Commission. But w when it comes to animal welfare, we have an overarching European animal welfare legislation that allows for an exemption to each country based on mm -hmm. religious grounds. and. That exemption is used in um, most EU member states and therefore in most member states there is no issue. Um, now if Finland uh, decides to no longer use this uh, exemption um, it has to notify uh, the Commission and so we have asked already um, how the situation is. I believe it is very important to uh, you know look at to, to create a balance. On the one side, we have animal welfare, which is really important, but we have a human right and a fundamental mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. about uh, freedom of religion. So um, you have to make legislation towards animals, but you cannot negate 
the human beings. Right. Yeah. So this, I think, is, is something where that we will watch very closely. We will work closely with the Jewish um, communities to ensure that um, you know this uh, this freedom of religion um, you know, mm. will be upheld. Okay. Um, the strategy says that Israel is a key partner for the European Union, including the global fight against anti-Semitism. Um, and while anti-Semitism is widely judged and condemned and fought in Europe today, Israel, the, the only Jewish state in the world, is under constant and often unjustified attacks, political attacks. Um, uh, how, how do you draw the line between anti-Semitism and anti-Zionism? So with regards to anti-Zionism and anti-Semitism, I don't think there is much of a difference. If you think about um, the development at the roots of, uh, of Zionism, it is a national movement of the Jewish people to have their self-determination, something that we grant to every people. Um, therefore, anti-Zionism would mean not to grant the Jews that right and uh, not to want to see Israel as a, as a state. Which, you know, if you, if you, if you take away um, uh, the, the basis uh, of, uh, of living, well, you know, then uh, it is clearly uh, mm -hmm. anti-Semitic. The, this uh, IRA definition clearly says that criticizing Israel like you would criticize any other government cannot be seen as anti-Semitic. So mm -hmm. you can criticize <coughs> Israel for its politics. But when it comes to, um, you know, double standards, so, um, for example, uh, holding uh, Israel responsible or asking Israel for different reactions that you would um, from other countries, for example, when they are being attacked, mm. um, or uh, holding the Jews here responsible for what, um, for the politics of Israel, mm. Uh, these are clear forms uh, of anti-Semitism. Mm. These are clearly the red lines when it is about the existence of the state of Israel. Mm. Uh, last week there, in, in Geneva, there was the United Nations Human Rights Council. And I, I just uh, read the report from there. And uh, there were four condemnations mm. against Israel. And one condemnation yeah. against Russia in this situation. Yeah, yeah I mean, this is uh, something, you know, that needs uh, um, balancing and addressing. <laughs> it is very clear. Um, the, it's, it is clear also that um, uh, we need to look uh, into uh, biases that exist also uh, within uh, the UN system, within our own systems and so on. So this is, uh, is something that needs to uh, be um, uh, addressed. It's also important to understand the role of, uh, of the EU in this, huh? because we, we have the coordinating uh, function, but member states um, have their own um, right in, in voting mm. the way they w want to vote. So um, it may be difficult to accept, but this is how it is. It is, so it is. <laughs> uh, we are having few minutes left, only few minutes. And uh, you met uh, uh, church leaders and, and um, civ civil society leaders mm -hmm. during our trip here. How do you see these uh, non-governmental organizations and their role in this uh, fight against anti-Semitism mm -hmm. and fostering Jewish life? Well, we have worked very closely um, with civil society organization at large, but in particular also with religious uh, organizations, uh, probably also because of my own you know, previous uh, responsibilities. I have uh, quite a network also to other um, religions. And I think it's really key that, for example, when it comes uh, to freedom of religion here in Finland with regards now uh, to 
um, uh, to Jewish uh, slaughter and Muslim way of slaughtering um, or also other um, freedom of religion related issues that um, uh, that the Christians, the main uh, religions under, uh, or main denominations, uh, let's say, understand the importance that it has also for them. Because in general terms, anti-Semitism, of course, is directed uh, first and foremost against the Jews, but it has a huge effect on the, our own values, our uh, democracy, on uh, how uh, we live in a, uh, in a diverse society. Right. And so standing up uh, for, um, uh, for uh, freedom of religion in this context with regards to the Jewish community and the Muslim community um, yeah, here in Finland, which um, the Tatars are also very old uh, community like, uh, like the uh, Jews here as well. Um, this uh, is, I think, very important and can be also uh, a, a powerful sign Mm. towards uh, the administration and the government. Right. And um, then you had an opportunity to, to participate in the founding meeting of um, the new group against anti-Semitism in the Parliament of Finland. How do you see the formation of, of such a group? Uh, if I'm not mistaken, it might be the first on, in a national uh, government uh, setting. Um, I'm not quite sure, but I, I think it is, uh, it's the first and it's definitely very important. We have a working group on anti-Semitism in the European Parliament. Uh, I believe that this uh, is an all party, should be an all party effort. Mm. Um, because no matter what you think about Israel, standing up uh, against anti-Semitism is also standing up for democracy here. Right. So uh, this should be, I believe, the aim <clears throat> for all um, parties. At the moment, we see that six out of the eight parties are represented in the group. Um, but I believe that, uh, you know, it, this is a, it's a good start and a very important uh, to see, to get as many um, members of parliament on board uh, to uh, fight uh, against anti-Semitism. Thank you, Katharina von Schnurbein, the European Commission coordinator on combating anti-Semitism and fostering Jewish life. It's been a pleasure. It's been a pleasure and, and the Finnish spring has given its best <laughs> welcoming you to Finland. I understand and you always have to stay at least two or three days because then yesterday we had a very nice sunny day. So, so true. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. Thanks. Hyvät katsojat, tässä oli tämänkertainen Miksi juuri Israel-ohjelma, jonka on tuottanut Suomi Israel-yhdistysten liitto. Jos haluat lisätietoa näistä ohjelmista, liittomme ja sen eri puolilla Suomea olevien jäsenyhdistysten toiminnasta, klikkaa tuohon webbiosoitteeseen, jonka näet ruudun alareunassa. Kiitos seurasta ja palataan taas ensi kuussa asiaan.